I'm still catching up on a ton of horror movies dropped at the end of the month of October. So let's get right into Joe Lynch's adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft's The Thing on the Doorstep, entitled Suitable Flesh. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Through our tedious lives, we press many important buttons. But if you could do me a favor and hit that like button down below, share this video with all your social media addicted pals, click subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to ring that bell for notifications, I'd be in your eternal debt. Suitable Flesh is new in select theaters and on demand from RLJE Films. It's directed by Joe Lynch and written by Dennis Paoli from a story by H.P. Lovecraft called The Thing on the Doorstep. Heather Graham plays Dr. Elizabeth Derby, a psychiatrist visited by a troubled teen named Aza Waite, played by the babysitters Judah Lewis, who shares a manic tale that his father, Ephraim, played by Bruce Davidson, has been switching minds with him. Compelled by Asa's story, and witnessing a shift in his personality in her office, Elizabeth visits Ephraim's home and becomes entwined in a plot of body swapping and sexual promiscuity that threatens Elizabeth's livelihood and personal life with her husband, Edward, played by Jonathan Shake. In the middle of it all is Dr. Daniela Upton, played by Barbara Crampton, who's no stranger to H.P. Lovecraft stories. She plays a confidant of Elizabeth and wants to get to the bottom of this predicament as bodies begin piling up, and Elizabeth's mental state begins to fracture. I really, really, really wanted to like Suitable Flesh. I've been following the career of Joe Lynch and watched him evolve as a filmmaker through his early works, Wrong Turn 2, Chillerama, and Knights of Badastum, all the way up to the impressive Everly and the truly excellent Mayhem. I've seen the director grow and had high hopes when I heard he was tackling Lovecraft with a pretty top-tier cast. Unfortunately, while the film isn't a total wash, there's a large amount that misses its mark. First, the good. The last half hour of Suitable Flesh is gonzo and balls out. There's copious gore, lots of violence, a whole bunch of insanity, and plenty of trippy Lovecraftian weirdness. I think this is where Lynch was in his element, and I wish the rest of the film would have matched that level of intensity. I kind of feel like Lynch had the last half hour in mind from the beginning and didn't know exactly how to get there. It seems to be the best cooked bits of the film, and at the very least, one can say suitable flesh ends with a bang. Problems lie in that Lynch seems to be going for an homage to Stuart Gordon's films like From Beyond, Reanimator, and even Society, where the straight-laced and seemingly polite upper crust peel back the layers of civility and reveal sexually deviant acts boiling right under the surface. Lynch characterizes Graham's Elizabeth as repressed, unfulfilled sexually, and finding herself attracted to this young boy in trouble in her office. These adult themes are more to the forefront in Suitable Flesh, with multiple scenes of sex and other kinds of eroticism occurring as the main motivation of both protagonist and antagonist. Now, all of those films, specifically Reanimator and From Beyond, had a perverse sexual nature present throughout them, but it wasn't pushed to the forefront until later in the films, and they also had other themes to explore. These were themes buried within the psychosis of the characters, but the movies weren't exactly about these psychoses. Suitable Flesh feels more like a one-trick pony making itself all about repressed sexuality, and it just isn't made convincing or compelling enough to sell it. Elizabeth sees Asa, Lewis, and is immediately all over him. Now, right off the bat, this seems off to me. Judah Lewis is a decent actor, but he doesn't have that youthful bad boy quality that, say, well, a Jonathan Shake had when he was Lewis's age. So I just couldn't buy Lewis's rebel shtick when he's possessed by Ephraim. Lynch also tries to emulate the steamy Skinamax thrillers of the 90s with expansive sex scenes, porn motivations, and of course a scorching saxophone accompaniment. But while I'm sure he's seen these films, Lynch has trouble recreating these sweltering scenarios effectively. There's something about the way Lynch films these love scenes that just miss their mark. They're passionless, lit too brightly and sharply, and the actors just don't feel like they're into it. 
I mean, how hard is it to do a sexy scene with Heather freaking Graham? But for some reason, there isn't an ounce of sensuality or passion present. I know that might be subjective, but it just didn't work for me. Right now, I'm going to pause before things get too complicated. Too late. It's too late. Too late. Too late. Too late. It's too late, Alma. It's all too late, Alma. Because since this film deals with body swapping, things go all over the place in terms of who's who and how they act with one another. I don't want to get too much into why Elizabeth might be attracted to Asa. Was she attracted to his boyish good looks? Did her motherly notions become triggered to protect him? Or was she attracted to Ephraim's perverse mind in Asa's body? The problem with all of these questions is that the chemistry between Graham and Lewis is just not there, so I didn't really care about the answers. Lynch doesn't do a good job of keeping the plot punchy and easy to follow. This is a film where actors have to stretch themselves to act like others in the cast. But aside from the mustache-twirling evil performances of Ephraim, no one feels as if they're trying to capture the nuance of each of these fairly strong character actors. Above all of the performances, Barbara Crampton shines the brightest, as usual. She always gives it her all with both a sexiness and authority that only helps sell some of these complicated themes. Man, I really wanted to like this. The gore and horror that occur in the latter half hour works, but suitable flesh doesn't titillate. The humor and irony miss their mark, and winks to previous Lovecraft-Gordon collaborations and the 90s eroticism felt undercooked. Suitable Flesh seemed like an effort to make a body and rebellious film, but it fails to go all the way with any of the naughty stuff. It's a noble endeavor, but sadly, a failed one. Still, I look forward to what Lynch has in store for us next. He's delivered some great films. Suitable Flesh just isn't one of them. Stuck inside your reality Your doom Oh, your doom Your doom 